So I got to ask you, man, you've been all around the world, been to a lot of countries, you taught, you played in different countries. What country has the best basketball players in the world? Best basketball players in the world? Where do they come from? So today, uh, I have the pleasure of being at this college, IPRC, I believe. I linked up with a professional basketball player from Seattle. Today, I want to interview him. He's teaching basketball players fundamental skills on how to play professional basketball. Yeah, so Seth, what's your whole name? Yusuf Aziz, Coach Yusuf Aziz. How long you been playing professionally? Me, I played, I played for 12 years. Okay. Uh, I did uh, Europe as a rookie. I did Frankfurt, Germany. Mm. I did uh, Amsterdam. I did uh, two seasons in Brazil. And I did uh, four seasons in Kuwait mm. and one season in Qatar. Out of all those places you played, like what was your favorite league that you Brazil, played in? Brazil, definitely. Oh, yeah. There were 16 teams in Brazil, and uh, we were in a, in, a, in a state called Santa Catarina. It's in the south. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to go on uh, road trips. Yeah. And we play like each state. They have two teams, and like normally they like, go to Rio, Sao Paulo. Uh -huh. And uh, we stay there for a week, you know what I'm saying? Play two games and come back. Cool. And we had two home games. So Brazil, it was a really competitive league. And at the time when I was playing, like um, 06, 06, 05, okay. um, they had like um, like actually five or six uh, Brazilian NBA players. Mm. Remember Barbosa and Neymar? Yeah, 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 yeah. So they all came from the Brazilian, uh, Brazilian uh, National League. Okay. Yeah. So the last country you played in was Qatar. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So how was that league? It was good. It was all right. Um, they, it's a smaller league. Uh, they only have nine, um, nine teams, but the uh, the uh, the imports are good. They bring a lot of really high quality Americans over. Uh -huh. uh, and also at that time they were like giving um, nationalities to a lot of African players. Okay. So like a lot of my teammates were like Senegalese, mm -hmm. uh, Sudanese, you know, uh, Somali and that. Mm -hmm. So um, it was it was it was it was competitive because you know these guys that you can see right now they're very athletic. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you had to really <laughs> try to get your stuff off. You yeah, yeah, yeah. What do you do here, around Okay, so last year we started um, a basketball consulting agency, okay. and our, our mission is to lead African basketball forward. So we do that by player development, team development, and we do like sports branding. I don't know if you can check our Instagram page at Azamco Global. Okay. Um, but we're we're trying to give these boys an opportunity. You know, they got the talent, but they, they, they lack coaching, and really they lack infrastructure. Okay. So we are trying to provide both high quality instruction. Here, show, show your hands, big, okay? I catch, I drop my right my right shoulder, give him a shimmy, one dribble, jump hook. Right, you guys do the same thing left. Mm -hmm. And then we're also in the plans. We have plans in, underway to build our own Think Global headquarters in, in Niamata, Burger Sera. Okay. So once that comes online, we're going to be able to do this 24-7 mm -hmm. and, and much, much more. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So um, we're, this is our first year. But um, as of uh, within this year, we have grown tremendously. Uh, we have a team in the second division, Rwanda Basketball Federation. Okay. And uh, this, we have to start in the second division, and then you, you get an opportunity to move your way up. So we have to finish first or second in the league, and then we can join the division one. So mm. right now we're in fourth place, yeah. and uh, the playoffs start at the end of June. Okay. So we're hoping to make a push b b b towards the playoff. Uh, we have a five-year strategic plan. Um, the plan actually is uh, allowing us to, to qualify for the division one after the second year. But right now we're right on the cusp. So if we can advance that year forward uh -huh. by qualifying for Division One this year, it would be fantastic. But uh, we'll see how it goes. That's cool. Yeah. So like the players who are here now, like do they have to like sign up somewhere special or like go to your website to sign up the? Uh... No, most of our stuff we know these players. I have a relationship with these players. Okay. Um, we represent, so we have player representation as well. So we represent five. Uh, professional athletes in the Rwanda Basketball Federation through our agency, Azamco Global. Okay. Uh, we have Frank, we have Blaze, we have Bigfoot, uh, we have Justin who plays for Reg. 
uh, and, and, and another player. So they, we provide like contract negotiation for them. Uh, and then like we do, we help them with like their sports branding, making them a better basketball profile. Uh, we're, we're building a database on online right now as we speak to again, provide opportunities for African players all around the continent. Um, cool. We have um, relationships in, in the Gambia, mm. uh, South Sudan, South Sudan. Shout out to Lou Aldang and my man yeah. Wade. Uh, <laughs> you know, they, we're creating a pipeline. We have these big kids over in South Sudan, seven yeah. boys, you know what I'm saying? And uh, it's a lot easier for them to come to Rwanda mm -hmm. than it is to go to the States or go to Europe, you know? So yeah. we're gonna act like a filter mm -hmm. uh, in Rwanda because they can get the Fortnite visa, come here, we'll train them, and then kick them out and let them go wherever they're going, you know what I'm saying? Nice. So, um, yeah, so that's it, man. So we, uh, so, so they don't have to sign up. And these, a lot of these players we have relationships with. And yeah. then I have my team. So a lot of these guards, about four or five of these guards, uh -huh. actually play for Azamka Global in the second division. Okay. That's that's what's up, man. It sounds like y'all doing your thing out here internationally, man. Yeah. I ain't gonna lie, like, a lot of us in the U.S. who come from the U.S., we don't even be thinking about going international like that. What made you, what inspired you to want to go international and play ball and, and do well, things like know, that? Well, you know, it was opportunity, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So coming out of college, um, you know, uh, I, got a, I got an opportunity to do, like, some European, uh, like, a, like a showcase. Okay. Agent contacted me, was like, okay, I can get you a job. It's going to be a quick job, you know, not a lot of money, just to get yourself to establish a career. Yeah. Went to Frankfurt, Germany, did that. Then I got another gig to go to Amsterdam. And then from there, it just kind of, spiral out of control you know nice um, but it's all good and then mm -hmm. through through playing basketball at some of these locations i was able to travel a lot like we had training camps and stuff you know what i'm saying yeah when i was in brazil we had to go to argentina and paraguay uh -huh. and uruguay when yeah. i'm in qatar i get to go you know all the places in the middle east lebanon mm -hmm. saudi arabia dubai yeah. uh even oman um you know and then like training camp we had in egypt and bulgaria you know so i've been able to travel a lot uh yeah. through 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 basketball through my career cool so what would you say because there's a lot of brothers and sisters out there who want to play like professional ball like that with some words of advice that you could give to people because a lot of people just look like the nba like yeah. that's the only thing going you know what i mean like what kind of advice do you have people who want to play ball professionally so, i mean first number one take it seriously um a lot of people stick uh, skip steps mm -hmm. so uh, a lot of people contact us that i want to play professional ball professional I'm like well where did you play What's your resume? What college you play for? You know what I'm mm -hmm. saying? And a lot of them don't have answers to that. So to think that you don't have, you play basketball and your skill, you can, you can shoot and stuff, but if you don't play, you know what I'm saying, it's hard that somebody's going to take a chance on you to sign you to a contract to bring you to play for professionally. So mm -hmm. make sure you go to, through the proper steps. You got to play high school, play college, and then when mm -hmm. after you play college, then that's, that's, that's the time that you're going to try to um, try to go to play professionally. Uh, okay. Agencies are little, you know, hit or miss. Um, mm -hmm. uh, it's always a thing about, do you sign with like a big agency where they can easily get you a job? Or do you want to be something more specific with like more personal relationship with uh -huh. your agent where he can like focus more time on you and try to get you maybe a good quality job? Nice. So that's the decision that uh, people have to make for themselves. But pretty much every league, every country in the world pretty much has a basketball league. Yeah. Europe, they have like two or three. Okay. In Asia, they have like two or three, like a D1, a D2. Even mm -hmm. Rwanda, they have two divisions. Yeah. So, um, you know, there's plenty of jobs out there. So uh, do your due diligence, do some research, contact some agents, and then, uh, yeah, see where the chips fall. Cool, man. So I got to ask you, man. You've been all around the world, been to a lot of countries. You taught, you played in different countries. What country has the best basketball players in the world? Best basketball players in the world... Where do they come from? America. No doubt. All right. Yeah. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> That's really a no-brainer. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? I come from Seattle. Shout out to the 206. Uh -huh. We got all types of NBA players. A lot of yeah. NBA players now are coming up. Uh -huh. uh, shout out to Jamal Crawford and Brandon Roy and Nate Robinson, all my people back home. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, I mean, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. We train differently. I think really what it is is that college experience. The NCAA experience when you go to college, four-year high-level uh, university, you get that training and, you know, you get that really, really, really good coaching. Yeah. And uh, that might not be something that, uh, you know, these guys ha have access to. Okay. Even in Europe, they start in club, club teams. Mm -hmm. uh, so Europe is, is high-level basketball as well, but it's a different style. Okay. You know what I'm saying? So... Uh, obviously, in the states, we, we got a lot going on. The NBA, the D League, mm -hmm. and uh, yeah, those players now are coming up, man. They're balling. They're balling. Take your shirt off! <laughs> Take your shirt off, buddy! Alright? I'm older than everybody out here! Take your shirt off! What's your name, good brother? Oh, 
Let me show okay. you. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you from the Shy town man. Yeah, I'm from Chicago, sure. brother. Line nice, up, line man. Up, line up. Yeah, so uh, how long you been out here in Rhonda? Uh, I just got out here on, uh, what was it? Uh, I landed Friday okay. you know, for all the BAL events. Um, you know, I knew my boy Yusuf from uh, over in Qatar when I lived over there for a few years years when I was playing uh, professionally over there. Oh, cool. So I knew I have a couple players playing for Al Ali you know, mm -hmm. from Chicago as well. So nice. once I once I knew I was going to come here and the East here, it just, it just all made sense for me to come out here. So yeah. Asked me to come out here and help put on a little workout for some of the guys, the local kids, just trying to get better and improve their skill and their talent. So that's good. good dude, so you know, mm -hmm. I just said, no problem. I'll come out there and help you out. Nice, man. Yeah. So how you like Ryan so far? Like, what's your first impression out here? Oh, this is amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. Mm -hmm. yeah, I think I think everybody needs to come visit here. Okay. Everybody, like just, just straight up. So like you just it's just a great feel. The weather's beautiful. The mm -hmm. people are nice and friendly. The views are amazing, you know. Yeah. It, man, it, it, it's really, really, really spectacular. Mm -hmm. So, like you said, you play in the league internationally. Where you uh, what other countries you played in? Uh, I played in Japan. I played in Morocco. I played in Qatar. I played in Kosovo. Uh, I played in Saudi. You know, mm -hmm. I went to international tournaments in Dubai and stuff like that. So, Dang. yeah, I, I, I played a, I played a little bit of basketball around the world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, uh, so our brothers and sisters out there who want to get in the league, like the NBA, WNBA, stuff like that. What are some inspiring words you could give them? And also, like, to look internationally, too. You know what I'm saying? Uh, um, NBA, WNBA, internationally, mm -hmm. it's all the same. It's okay. all work. It's Got all you. work. You're not going to get nowhere with this game of basketball if you don't put into the work. Mm -hmm. You know, you can you can think that you're working, but that next person might <laughs> that you wake up at, you might wake up at 9. It's somebody already in the gym at 6. Like me, I'm, still, I'm 38. I'm still in the gym from 5 to 7. Mm -hmm. I beat people to the gym half my age. You understand? So yeah. you got to understand, with this game of basketball, where you want to be, it's all about work. Nothing's going to be given to you. Unless you're just a seven foot seven, just giant or seven footer that you know that they just, oh yes yeah, so come put them in the put them in the game. Yeah. You know? That's the only thing, uh, only time for things like that happen. But if you really want to accomplish something in this game of basketball, you got to put in the work. Nice man, work. appreciate you man. Oh no, no problem, brother. Yeah man. So uh, right now, Rhonda, you have the ball going on. Exactly. Like, like that's a big deal out here, man. It's a big deal. It's a big deal. So the NBA invested a quarter of a billion dollars um, into the development of African basketball. Okay. And uh, what we're really trying to do is kind of <laughs> ride that wave, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they're developing all the infrastructure. They have a league that has uh, 12 teams. So mm -hmm. they have two conferences. The first conference plays in March in okay. Dakar, Senegal. Uh, and then the second co conference was the six team in the car. They play off. Uh, each team plays uh, each 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 other team one time. Okay. So you have five games. The top four teams qualify for the finals in Kigali. Mm. The second conference is in uh, Cairo, Egypt. Okay. So again, they have six team in Cairo. The top four teams that come to the playoffs here in Kigali. Okay. So right now it's playoff times. I've been to uh, each game since um, mm. since uh, they started on Saturday. Yeah. Uh, they got teams represented from uh, Angola, Egypt, uh, Mali, Senegal. Um, who else is out there? Um, uh, Ivory Coast. Okay. And the Rwandan team was was, was in it as well, but they lost the first match. Ah. Uh, yeah. So they're out, unfortunately. Okay. But uh, it's right there in the BK Arena, uh, uh -huh. ten thousand uh, 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 seat capacity. Yeah. Really, really state of the art facility. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's good to see like um, you know those guys, like I said, getting a place to uh, yeah a place to shine. <laughs> a man from Chicago, he just got out here last week. Okay. So, uh, he came in and you know sat down. We were at the game. We sat down. He looked around. He was like. And this is the first time I've ever been in an arena with all black people. Nah. You know what I'm saying? You know, everybody in the yeah. arena is black. You know what I'm saying? So it was just interesting to see because even like in a city like ATL, you know, yeah. which I reside in, um, okay. uh, you know, you go to Phillips Arena or whatever, and, uh, uh, you know, yeah. it's, it's a black city, but when it comes to ticket prices and 
the, the arena is going to be, you know, something different. Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, the ball, the Basketball African League, it's also um, uh, broadcasted on NBA TV. Okay. So even people back home can, can take a look at it, but it's growing. This is its third season, mm-hmm. and each season is getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. That's so up, I think man. for the NBA, mm-hmm. if they can invest this money and get just one player, you know, another Giannis, yeah. another Embiid, so the whole investment will pay for itself. You, know mm-hmm. you get a superstar out of developing all these countries' basketball leagues, you know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and consolidating into like an NBA Africa. Uh-huh. If they can get one player out there, it will, yeah. it will, it will pay for itself. So uh, it's decided to have the ball in town. Uh, we made a couple of connections and we'll see where, where the partnerships and stuff can go in the future. Yeah, but yeah man, it's right, it's right on time. You know, basketball is uh, booming. Sports in Africa in general is the industry that's uh, is, is coming up mm-hmm. and there's a lot of potential in it. So we're, we're in the right place, right niche at the right time. Definitely, definitely. So uh, can I get your contact information? Absolutely. How can people get in contact Absolutely. with you? So the best way is Instagram. We got a pretty decent Instagram following at Azonko Global, A-Z-O-M-C-O. G L O B A L. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, we got the same zonkaglobal.com. Uh, we're we're, we're going to be releasing a player database mm-hmm. where teams and players can, uh, you know, it's like a scouting service. Yeah. So that's that would be a good opportunity for players as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, but all the peeps back home in the States, man, yeah, check us out on Instagram, follow us, support us, and uh, check out our talent and see what we got going on. We appreciate it. Definitely. Thank you for uh, letting me come here and check y'all out, man. I got one more important question. This is. One of the most important questions I got to ask you right now. You're a professional, man. The Nuggets of Miami. (laughs) To be honest, it's going to be a good series. Yeah. Uh, But I think the way it's looking, I think Jokic, man. Jokic is, 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 it makes the right play every damn time. You know what I'm saying? And that's going to be hard to... To, to defend, you know, mm-hmm. if he's not passing it out the post, he's, he's scoring in the low post. If he's not scoring in the low post, he's scoring from the perimeter. You know, he makes the right decisions. And then the Denver got a lot of uh, a deep bench, so it's gonna be a good, good, good series. Um, mm-hmm. You know, Miami is, 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 is gritty, man. You know, they're tough. Um, yeah. But I think, I think, I think this time around is, is, is Denver's chance to, to win the championship. Okay. Yeah. All right. Yeah. <laughs> that's from a professional yeah. basketball yeah, player. Yeah. So we'll see. We'll see how that turns out. But that's yeah. my prediction, at least. Yeah. Cool, man. Yeah. But shout out to you, man. Keep doing what you're doing, man. It's important that you know, mm-hmm. got back in the, in, in the states, you know, get an awareness that yeah. you know, Africa's beautiful, man. And, you mm-hmm. know, the world is a, is, is a playground. Keep traveling. Keep exploring. Definitely. And, uh, yeah, man. More you guys should come over. Come start if you want. To start off in Africa. Definitely. Number one is, you know, location is Rwanda, man. You know, yeah. you the transition, mm-hmm. come through, get your feet wet, then, yeah. you know, continue on your journey from there. But yeah, shout out to you, man. Keep doing what you're doing. It, man. And I uh, appreciate you coming out and checking us out. Thanks, sir. Yeah.